Hey, what's going on? So today I'm going to be reviewing something that if the eight-year-old version of myself were here, he'd be really jealous of. And it's the Star Wars Jedi Challenges by Lenovo. So back in 2012, uh, Disney purchased Lucasfilm for a whopping $4 billion. And since then, the company's been pretty busy uh, making movies and cartoon series. Uh, basically, anything they can make that will help them recoup that money, they're doing it. But I'm happy to report that the recent product, the partnership that they've formed with Lenovo to make the Jedi Challenges, it's not a pure money grab because this product is awesome. Uh, so let's take a look at what you get. First of all, uh, is the AR Mirage, uh, their headset. Uh, this is kind of the, obviously the core aspect of the, the system. So the way it works is there is a tray on the side here where you insert your phone into the tray. Uh, you connect that cable to the headset. Uh, and then the image from the phone is kind of broadcast, I guess, if you will. Uh, down to the set of mirrors within the headset, which then give you that augmented reality holographic kind of look and feel. And it's pretty awesome. It's actually really awesome. Uh, in the headset, you also have two cameras. I don't know if you can see that, but one on each side. Those are used for the position tracking uh, or position tracking to kind of monitor where you are. There's also a set of buttons on the side of the headset, uh, back button, select button, menu button which actually really help with navigating in the UI when you're in the game itself. Uh, the headset weighs just a shade over one pound, has really soft, cushy foam. Uh, it's actually pretty comfortable to wear. I've gone for as long as like 30 or 45 minutes wearing it, and it gets a little warm, but not bad. Uh, and it's certainly comfortable. It's not overly heavy. It has adjustable straps, one on each side and one on the top. Um, so I've, worn it myself uh, and I've had eight-year-old my eight-year-old daughter wore it and she you know uh, was able to adjust it in a way that was comfortable for her so uh, you know not bad it's a good headset you also have the glowing beacon uh, which is this little soft squishy ball that lights up as you can see uh, you basically just put this on the middle of the floor and it aids the system and kind of tracking where your uh, where the gameplay should be taking place um, so pretty simple little apparatus but helpful of course the star of the show is the lightsaber and I think Lenovo and Disney knew that this is what everyone was really going to be the most excited about because uh, it's not some cheap plastic uh, little doohickey it's metal construction has a nice solid feel, weighs about a half a pound. Um, you know, the buttons have a nice click to them, the activity trigger. Uh, you also have this little button here that kind of resets the lightsaber when you're in the game. Um, obviously when you turn it on, you get that nice glow, which helps with the tracking. So uh, the lightsaber is really nice. So I've got a little uh, dog visitor here. Um, but yeah, it, it's great and uh, I should note that the lightsaber and the headset are both rechargeable. So you get plenty of cables for uh, recharging. You get cables for connecting your phone to the, to the headset. Um, works with iOS and Android, so pretty universal there. So that's what you get. Now let's talk about how it works. Um, like I mentioned, you have the phone tray here. So uh, setup's pretty, pretty quick and easy. Uh, insert your phone into the tray. Uh, before you do that, let me backtrack. You connect the lightsaber to your phone through Bluetooth. Uh, you do a quick little figure eight calibration of the lightsaber. Once that's done, you can put your phone into this tray, which simply opens up like so. Plop that down in there. Uh, then you insert this back into the headset plug in to the headset using a cable like this um, and then you're good to go I mean it really is it, I will say the first time I did it it, it took me um, took me a minute to kind of understand the process but 
When you open up the Star Wars Jedi Challenges app, it actually walks you through the eight steps for um, getting the game going. So um, pretty easy to set up. Now on the gameplay perspective, there are essentially three games that you can play. Uh, of course, the lightsaber battle is the one that most people are gonna kind of gravitate to. It's the, the headliner, I think. Um, and, and it really is great. So a general outline is there are six plants within the game that you kind of progress through as your, um, as your character gets better at fighting. And on each planet, there is the lightsaber battle, there is a holo chess, and there is a strategic combat. Um, so if we look at the, the lightsaber battles, uh, on each planet there are actually three separate battles. You have two assault modes where you have to fight off waves of assaults from droids and stormtroopers and things like that. Um, and it's pretty fun. It kind of helps you uh, train to, uh, you know, train for the big one-on-one -on -one matches. Uh, once you've worked your way through each of the two assault modes, then you unlock the the one-on-one -on -one battle with people like Darth Maul and Kylo Ren, and that's really where the fun is. Um, in the beginning, the first couple of one-on-one -on -one battles, they weren't overly difficult for me, um, and I kind of thought, well, this is just going to be a cakewalk through this entire process. But by the time I got to the fourth planet and had to fight Darth Vader, it got real. It got real quick. I mean, it was tough. He's moving fast and you know, you're trying to counteract his attacks while still attacking him. I mean, it's, it's tough. Um, so the one-on-one -on -one battles are pretty awesome. You know, it, it's kind of what you would expect. Uh, again, that's kind of the headliner of the show. So I did try and capture some of the in-game footage with the battles. Unfortunately, it's not that easy to do, um, you know, sticking your phone inside this headset and kind of holding the two while holding the lightsaber, it gets a little tricky. Um, but as you can see, uh, I at least captured a general look and feel for how the battles look. Uh, so hopefully that helps you there. So the, the second game is the Holo Chess, which comes from the original Star Wars Episode IV. Uh, the premise is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. You have these holographic characters on a uh, kind of chessboard, and each character has their own abilities and strengths and you have to strategically move them around the board to fight off the enemies and it's good it looks great the gameplay is pretty easy uh but it's not overly exciting for me it was the least exciting game of the three but still um it was uh you know it's a, a neat novelty it looks nice so the third game is the one that kind of surprised me the most and that it was the one i found the most exciting uh the strategic combat the general, general idea is you have a aerial view of your battlefield. You're surrounded by buildings and ships and droids and stormtroopers and everything. And using the lightsaber, there's an on-screen menu where you can select different uh, defense mechanisms to fight off the waves of attack that are coming. Uh, and it's really fun. The thing that made it the most exciting to me was just the, the grand scale. You know, you've got this massive town more or less around you and you're constantly having to you know move around the field and look everywhere to see where the different waves of attack are coming from and uh, I mean it, it's really exciting and it was uh, it's also the most challenging of the three I thought uh, the first planet the strategic combat was not that hard um, just kind of a get your feet wet but by the time I got to the second planet it was pretty challenging and it was taking multiple uh, multiple attempts to kind of get through those so uh, it's really awesome and again I tried to kind of capture what that looks like um, in the gameplay itself uh, it's kind of tough to do but hopefully it helps give you an idea of just how big the scale is okay so real quick what are the highlights for me uh, number one is the uh, just the imagery, the holographic imagery, it's incredible. I mean, whether you're in a room that's, you know, well lit or a room that's dark, uh, it is way better than I expected. There's not, you know, some shuddering and jumpy movement. I mean, it really is high quality. Uh, the the second thing to me uh, was the the tracking capabilities. 
it's really surprising how well the system can detect, you know, when you're dodging and swaying and ducking to kind of avoid the attacks in the one-on-one -on -one battles. Um, it's way better at that than I thought it would be given how few apparatuses uh, you really have. Uh, the third thing that I love about it is the portability. Obviously with essentially three objects, this is something that you know most kids could throw in their backpack and take over to their buddy's house. Um, everyone has a smartphone these days, so um, you know it's, uh, it's nice to have something that you can just quickly grab and take with you to share with your friends. Um, so that's always a, a plus. All right, so what are the low points? Really, there aren't many. Uh, the navigation in the, in the actual game itself is a little tricky at first, but once you kind of understand which buttons you need to call on on the headset, uh, you, you kind of get the hang of it, and then once you do, you're good to go. Uh, but there is a, a short learning curve there. The, the biggest downside to me, or in my mind, is the somewhat limited lack of gameplay. Like I said, you have six planets, on each planet you have three games uh, and then within those games you sometimes have two or three levels to get past but once you've completed that you're you're done you know you're forced to go back and just basically replay um, levels and, and things that you've already beaten and played in the past so I don't know what the plans are with Lenovo and Disney for creating additional games that would work in conjunction with the headset I think there are certainly plenty of opportunities, even if you had to go out and buy an additional accessory or something like that, it would be worth it. Uh, but that being said, if you're a Star Wars fan, you're gonna love this. I, I grew up loving Star Wars. Uh, my, I'm sure, pretty sure my parents still have uh, some of our Star Wars action figures stored away. Um, I'm, I don't follow it as closely now as I did when I was a kid. I still enjoy it. but. I can't tell you how excited I was to play this and it did not disappoint. So if you're a Star Wars fan, you're gonna love it. If you're not a Star Wars fan, I think you're still gonna like it. Uh, my eight-year-old daughter does not like Star Wars. I've never been able to get her to watch any of the Star Wars movies or anything like that, which that's fine. But she loved this game. Uh, she, she had a blast. Uh, and it's not just the kids. I loved it. Uh, my wife, got a kick out of playing it and we had some friends over uh, and it's almost as much fun for the adults to watch other adults playing this game <laughs> because you you can't help but get into it uh, and it's pretty comical uh, but they had just as much fun as we did. The, the price for the set is $199. It is available now. It came out just a couple of weeks ago. Um, so again that's my recommendation um, and that's my review. Hopefully it was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. Um, otherwise, may the force be with you.